all, all of that. Shocking new figures say the number of patients waiting for more than a month to see a GP has risen by 79%. Now, we put this across our social media earlier and we have been inundated with your comments. Uh, I've had one in here from Sue who says that she's uh, been trying to see a GP about her insomnia for months. She's now given up trying and says that her husband, who has MS, can't get an appointment until May. And Peppy uh, called their surgery at 8.30 this morning and was 110th in the queue. I know. Um, and finally, Carr said that uh, she has to wait eight weeks at her doctor's just for a telephone appointment. Now, we were... Um, talking about this amongst ourselves a little bit earlier on, and I think we're all really quite lucky in terms of, you know, the sort of service, if you can call it that, that we get from our GPs. Isn't that right, B? Yeah, I mean, that shocks me to hear those statistics. I've had the same family doctor for 27 years. Um, if I want to make a, an appointment, I don't have to wait more than a week to see my doctor. And, you know, she's very... She, she's... She's part of the family for me because she knows my history, my children's history. Um, you know, whenever I go for advice, especially when I was going through my cancer, she was really, really supportive of that and, you know, gave me all, all the advice um, to, to think about. And, you know, just hearing that, it makes me truly grateful to know that mm. I'm, you know, in a minority of yeah. people that just don't get to see their GP. But also, probably in the minority of people who still see the same GP, as opposed to how it works at my GP. So we're, very, you know, really good and we're able to get emergency appointments with ease, thankfully. Mm. But what I don't have is what I had when I was younger, where you come under one GP, you go and see one GP, whereas now you're part of the GP practice. It's yeah. basically whoever's free, that's who you see. Which yeah, no, so you're I, really I lucky see the to same, still have yours. the same GP. Um... Yeah, I'm, I'm truly grateful. I don't know about the rest yeah, of Yeah, but you have something similar, don't you? Yeah, I do. So um, our GPs, and my, all my family are there. Like, my sisters are there, my kids are all there. Uh, my son and my husband have just moved to another practice. Um, but you used to see the same doctor all the time. Now you never see the same doctor yeah. all the time. You get there and you have to wait. And also you have to wait ages for the appointment, obviously. I haven't been for years, but it was always important to have a good relationship with the receptionists because they'd always, like, try and sneak you in <laughs> as much as they could. <laughs> Unfortunately, the receptionists have gone now. But we've still got the same nurse that we've had for years and yeah. years and years. Fleur, her name is. So she gave them all their mm. vaccines and everything. And the kids love her, you know. Yeah. Like when they were little, she'd give them toys to play with to distract them and everything. But um, as I said, I haven't been to the doctors because I don't feel like I need to go, really. No, you were clean, you've got, always got a clean bill of health. Yeah, you, Linda. I have. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think we, nurses wise, that's where I've had a wait. I don't know mm. about you, Kelly, but nurses wise at my practice, that's where the difficulty is. And when yeah. I need to have a coil fitted, I think I had to wait two months for an appointment yeah. because they were like, there's such a shortage of nurses within my practice that there's just not enough nurses to go around to fill all the appointments that they need. Yeah, and one of my really good friends is a GP, and I think therein lies some of the issues that you were saying. So a lot of the community services, there's so many funding cuts with other community services that all of that then tumbleweeds down back onto the GPs to take the responsibility yeah. for the community services that have just been cut. So therefore, all of those problems kind of get funneled into the GPs and they're mm. supposed to be mm. like this mm. one-stop mm. shop Whereas actually all of the services that were in place are now no longer there. Mm. Um, and so a lot more weight is falling upon them, which again is increasing waiting times. And then you've got COVID and that's increasing waiting times. And the GPs themselves are desperate to get to the patients. They course, actually want to spend course. the time with the patients. Yeah. But again, you've been told you've got 10 minutes per person. And what if that 10 minutes is just identifying what the issue is? You know, those are yeah. the, the difficulties that GPs deal with. Um, so really it's really about increasing funding to GP practices. Well, yeah, yeah. So, um, so I think, you know, the, the number of GPs that the government wanted to put in place by this year, they haven't quite reached that number. Mm. So what we're seeing is we're seeing a slight decrease in GP numbers of an older generation who are retiring or choosing yeah. a uh, to have a better quality of life yeah. where working is concerned. And we haven't necessarily got enough GPs that are coming in to take their place. What we do have is a drop in practices. So some people have had their practice for decades, mm. probably similar to yours, yeah. Brenda. You know, once they've decided to retire, that practice then closes and suddenly mm. there aren't enough GP practices to go around. Yeah. And that's where we have a situation um, with people having to wait so long for their appointments 
commitments. You know, when the government does say, you know, they are putting money into trying to get um, a sufficient number of GPs into the system, but some would argue, and those who have messaged us will say that's just not happening fast enough. No. Not Remember when we were young, GPs used to come to the house. If you had chicken pots or measles or something, they didn't yeah. want you to go to the surgery. They'd come and give you a home yeah. visit. I don't know if that still happens now. No. Yeah, and we did, um, we did a poll, actually. Do you struggle to see a GP? And 63% of you say yes, 27% no. Okay.